Hello, 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 and thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Good morning to you. I hope that you are off to a great start. You know what we like to do here. We want to inspire, empower, and encourage you to be your best self. Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny Spark can set a great forest on fire, and today we want to get you fired up, of course, to have a great day. My guest today is author Tina Taguchi, and she has written the book, The Effective Habits of a Newborn Christian. Basically, your habits are everything from a childhood up. It's the same thing as growing in your faith with Jesus. You need to know what are the first things in your life that you need to do, that need to become habits. What's going to be important in your life as you step out of your comfort zone and what you call your natural level of living? What are the habits that God wants you to have, that this universe needs you to have every day at the same time you get up and pray, walk, talk, and have a real relationship with God. Those are important, and you shouldn't step away from them. A powerful spiritual being, that's what you are, and that's what she wants to make sure that you stay. So let me tell you a little bit more about Tina. She is a writer who has spent most of her career in the medical profession and as a mother raising two children. She has had extensive experience working as a certified nurse's assistant, a CNA, at the University of Charlottesville, Virginia Hospital. A person with deep compassion, Tina has spent over a decade providing hospice services and as an early childhood teacher, um, exposing Christian values in the Episcopal Church in Virginia. Tina is happily married and lives with her husband in Southern Pines, North Carolina. Now, as a Virginia native, you know, I have to give a hoo-ha out to a fellow Virginian. Well, without any further ado, good morning, Tina. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yes, I love the title of your book, The Effective Habits of a Newborn Christian. So I have to ask you, why did you decide that you wanted to write, well, maybe let me back up a little bit. Why did you want to write a Christian book? Well, um, I always wanted to be a, uh, a, I wanted to write a book um, as a child. Um, uh, As a child, I wanted to be an author. Uh, The the desire to write books was... um, uh, in, in me, and mm-hmm. I, and God wouldn't allow me to write books for some reason. Um, for uh, it, it just was I, I felt like I had this um, uh, problem learning. I, I had a disability mm-hmm. uh, growing up as a child. Um, I felt um, like I had a learning disability, mm-hmm. and it went with me as an adult and. Um, I and I, I felt like I had all these trials and tribulations and storms and, and struggles, and mm-hmm. um, and for some reason I I wanted to write my own biography mm-hmm. to tell people about my struggles and my trials and God, um, I, I felt that He didn't want me to write about that. He felt I felt like that it was um, selfish and self-centered, and then when I become a born again Christian. Uh, I wrote the book, The Effective Habits, in like three months. Mm-hmm. So God was telling me, you know, um, that you know, I felt that God was telling me that if you, you if you rely on Him, that you know He will validate you. But if mm-hmm. you don't rely on Him, that you know, you, you know, you're, you're you're getting your validation from 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 the world, so mm-hmm. if you if you try to get validation other work you know from the world, you're not going to get you're not going to get validated. Mm-hmm. So I felt that when I become a born again Christian, God validated everything within me. Mm-hmm. So, 
So That's I, I, awesome. I felt mm-hmm. that God fulfilled all my desires within, mm-hmm. within Him and within the Holy Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Well, did you did you find that you received any type of um, inspiration in particular to write this book? Or did you find that you were just simply inspired to share whatever thought or gift or or happens that whatever happened with the world? Was it was it very specific for you? Uh, well, uh, well, a lot of my struggles that I went through was very hard for me. Mm-hmm. So God, God fixed a lot of what I went through with through prayer. So right. when I when I when I went through prayer with God, God, every day He when I when I went through prayer, He fixed a lot of them of things. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's kind of hard to understand. But when you go through prayer with God, he fixes it. it it's kind of hard to understand that, but he mm-hmm. fixes it for you each th- through a step process. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so every day, it, it's not just he fixes it, um, you know, everything in one, one process. Right, it's a right. Process. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. A, it's a step mm-hmm. process. So the, the same it's, way it's that... A step mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. The same way that it would be with perhaps anyone that you were having a relationship, a, a human Absolutely. relationship with. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's why it's important to have habits with God. So yeah. it's a step process. So it's not going to be fixed on just, you know, you know, just going into a relationship with God. It's not going to be fixed on one, one, one time with God. It's, right. it, it has to be every day. So God's, you know, it's just almost like a, you know, every, every day you go into a relationship with God, He's gonna, you know, He's gonna fix it, you know, through mm-hmm. a step process. So it's just not gonna be, you know, every a one time fix. Right. And that's why a lot of people say I'm gonna for, forgive somebody. And then it's gonna <laughs> fix it. it's, it's, that's not gonna happen. It's not so gonna happen. It, really. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just not gonna be. I forgive that person, and it's going to be fixed. It's it is right. a process thing with God. So, so. true. And thank yeah. you for reminding everyone of that. Not just the new Christian, but even some of our our more mature Christians. Someone out there right. needed to hear that today because right. it is a process, and we do need to be patient with each other. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of people uh, will come to me and they'll ask me how to forgive, and and. And matter of fact, just just about two weeks ago, a, a fella asked me that that at church, and he says, "Well, how how do you forgive?" And and he's and I and you know we're me and my husband were telling him, you know, it's not just that you think you forgive, but it's not just um, you just say I forgive and then it happens. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. sometimes you got to keep asking God and keep asking and keep yeah. asking. And mm-hmm. then when once you feel like it is totally lifted off of you, then mm-hmm. it, then then you feel like the process is happening. But sometimes you got to keep asking and keep asking until it, it finally the process has happened. But mm-hmm. sometimes it you feel like that. Right. You, you yeah. feel like that it, it has happened, but then. All of a sudden, and you know, I tell my daughter this. Mm-hmm. This, is, mm-hmm. this is what I tell my daughter sometimes. I said, sometimes you, if you keep thinking about something, then mm-hmm. it's not happening because God says that if you, mm-hmm. if you have, if you have still thinking about it and you're still mentioning it, then it's not written off. Mm-hmm. 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 Because God That's says that if you, you, God says if you've not written, if you're still thinking about it, it's not, it's not, it's not mm-hmm. written off. Mm-hmm. You're still, you're still not forgotten, forgiven that person. That's right, and we and we really do need to be aware. Of, and and I like how you said that God will lift it off of you. And I think that most people who have ever been through something where they really needed to forgive someone um, will agree with you that there does seem to be a release of the tension, yeah. of the right. the heartache, the headache, whatever it is that you're feeling, that there really right. is that release. And you, you are so correct. Now, I want to ask you a side question that I always ask my authors, and that is the title of your book. 
did you find that the title came to you first or were you writing the book and then you kind of had an epiphany and said, ah, that should be the title of the book? No, God gave me everything when I was mm-hmm. writing the book. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was writing the book, God gave me everything. He mm-hmm. gave me the gave it to me when I was writing the book, mm-hmm. and He gave me the when I was writing the book. He gave me that it should be the habits of a newborn Christian because our life should be revolved around habits because mm-hmm. our life is of our life is habits. Mm-hmm. And our life revolves around habits, and our life, even from the time that we are born, are habits. Mm-hmm. Because where our life it should be habits of, because our life is a habit, it, even from the time we're born, is a habit. Mm-hmm. So we should be, uh, our life should be revolved around God. Mm-hmm. It, it, it should totally be. Uh, we we should be totally involved with God, mm-hmm. and the only thing that should ever matter is God. Mm-hmm. And this, mm-hmm. Her whole life should, I mean, this whole world should, it, it, they shouldn't, it, they should recognize that this life is about God. It should, mm-hmm. it, it's totally about God. That's right. That's right. We have so many habits of of other things that are not productive for us or that are very bad for us. So we should learn to pick up, and and I'm glad that you're saying that, pick up some good habits and and that spending time with God and and finding out what does he want for us to do. That that is a a great thing to mention. Now, you, you mentioned it a few times, and that is the word forgiveness. And I want to ask you, why do you believe that forgiveness is important um, to to in order for if if we say that we are um, kingdom builders, that we are believers in Christ, then why is it so important that we forgive? Well, um, because um, it actually tells us in the Bible. Um, mm-hmm. that um, in order for um, uh, us, for, for, in order for God, um, God, God, God teaches, God taught me, God taught me that after I, I was born again, that mm-hmm. he really doesn't hear us. He, do, he really doesn't even hear us or forgive us because in Matthew 6:15. Jesus told his disciples, if you do not forgive men mm-hmm. of their trespasses, mm-hmm. then neither will the Father forgive you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's very vital for us to forgive. Mm-hmm. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's very, very vital on this earth for us to forgive. Mm-hmm. And, and, I mean, for us to have a relationship with God, it's very, very vital for us to go to Jesus and, mm-hmm. and ask him to forgive us, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for him to cover us with his blood. It's very important because Jesus, that's what he died for. He died on the cross for us. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's very important for Jesus not to have died in vain for us. That's right. So I, I really, really think that it's very important for people today to understand that if they they let Jesus die in vain, that, you know, just because they don't want to ask for forgiveness, mm-hmm. it's very important for them to understand that God does not even hear them. He don't even hear them. Mm-hmm. The Father mm-hmm. doesn't even hear them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If they don't ask for people to forgive. That's right. That's right. Well, we are about to go to break, but Tina, I want to make sure that everyone is able to get a copy of your book and to stay in contact with you. What is the best way to do that? Well, I'm on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't do a lot of Facebook. I, I just like post stuff about Jesus. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. um, I have two daughters and um, my husband, but and I have a couple of sisters. But other than mm-hmm. that, I don't, you know, do a lot of like um, social media. But I do post a lot of stuff about Jesus. <laughs> I do a lot of Jesus stuff on there. But uh, um, other than that, I, I I I go on there and I um, 
I, I look at my my grandchildren. <laughs> You know. Right, of course, of course. Well, this is, we need to take a very short break, but when we get okay. back, we will talk more with Tina Taguchi about her book, The Effective Habits of a Newborn Christian. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Chester. Today we are talking about habits. And we need to have good habits, folks. We need to make sure that we have effective habits. So author today, Tina Taguchi, is sharing about her book, The Effective Habits of a Newborn Christian. We all remember being a newborn Christian and the fire that we had within us, but maybe we didn't know exactly what we were supposed to do and weren't supposed to do. So this is a subject that we really do need to touch on. Well, Tina, I wanted to ask you, uh, do you believe that the ha- that habits are important in order to develop a great Christian lifestyle? Absolutely. Uh, habits um, to make, yes, absolutely. Um, um, I get up every morning and I pray um, to God. Um, even before I open my eyes, I'm uh, saying, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, uh, Jesus. Good morning, Father. What can I do to please you, Father? I love you. And um, before I even go to the bathroom, before I have coffee, mm-hmm. I, before I even roll over, I'm asking him. And, and I try to make it a habit uh, before I even open my eyes and uh, do anything um, to try to see what I can do to serve him, to see what I can do to serve others, to see what I can do to, to please God. And then I have a little mm-hmm. altar, you know, that I go and I, I cover mm-hmm. myself with the blood of Jesus and I say, God, I, you know, what have I done wrong? What have I, uh, if I, you know, judge somebody wrongly or harshly or what kind of, mm-hmm. you know, what can I do to be forgiven of any of, any of my sins? Because, you know, I, I think it's very important you know, to be in a good relationship with God and to, to have habits of first. You mm-hmm. know, habits of first is um, because God knows your heart and he, he wants to be first in your life. He wants mm-hmm. to be first because it's having a covenant with God. It's like mm-hmm. being married. It's like, um, it's, it's, you know, God, if, you, if you put God first in your life, he's going to take care of everything else in your life, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everything. Because I know, because when my life was falling apart, when I had great sufferings and tri- tribulation, tribulations, I know how powerful God is. And he blessed me. He mm-hmm. blessed me. I know where my life was, and I, I know, for example, where I am now. Mm-hmm. I know what God did for me, and I would never go back to where I was. And I want to tell everybody how powerful and how loving our God is. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. want people to know what a loving, good God we have. He is an almighty, powerful loving God Mm -hmm. and I would never go back to where I was I was Mm -hmm. homeless I was um, sick very ill I have been in jail I have been in the worst pits on this earth and God brought me out of it Mm -hmm. for an example I have been there I have been an alcoholic I have been where People do not want to go back. And now mm-hmm. I'm telling you, God has, just from tithing and doing what God wants me to do, mm-hmm. I, am, I went from rags to riches. I'm as homeless. And mm-hmm. now I have more money than I can ever spend. And I actually gave everything I owned away. Mm-hmm. Everything. Mm-hmm. Because God wanted me to. When I wrote this book, I gave everything I owned away Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. God wanted me to. Mm -hmm. 
because I I want people to know, I want people to know what a good God we have. And then he replaced it all. He replaced everything I gave away. He replaced it because Mm -hmm. he's a good God. He is a Mm -hmm. good, good God. Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. I, I want people to know, I want people to know what a good God we have. Mm -hmm. He favors me. He is a good God. You know, and before I felt like a black sheep. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, I am a worthless person, and I'm telling you, he is a good God. He's mm-hmm. a very, very good God. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, I'm a very, I can testify to what God really is. He is a good God. Mm-hmm. I like how you said that you, you have been in those dark places, that you have yes. been, you know, where, where people would say, I hope that, that I never that I never go there, but yet so many people have been there and they forget to share that God has brought them from there to here, from there, from that, from that darkness into their present state of, of light. And it is absolutely a beautiful place as a breast cancer survivor. Um, I, I totally, Totally and completely understand, and I have the same type of testimony. And it's yes. Look at what God can do, because I am here. I am still yes. here. So your answer definitely, definitely touched me. Well, yes. one of the other things that you talk about, and and, and we mentioned it in in the first section um, session was about relationships. And how we have human relationships, but we also Mm -hmm. have a relationship with God, or that we should create the habit of having a relationship with God. And your book describes the importance about this relationship. Um, Now, I think people can understand, true, we need to have the relationship, but my question for you is, how do you start that relationship if you've never had one before, if you're brand new to Christianity and you just don't know what to do? Well, well, when I first started my relationship with God, I, I didn't know how when I first started. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I asked God. I cried out to him because I, um, I, I was the same way. I never went to church. I... Um, I, I didn't know how to start a relationship with God. I was uh, lonely. I didn't know how. I was kind of homeless. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, I was sort of wandering around, and I cried out to God. I, I was like, God, how, what, help me. I didn't know how. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you, you have to cry out to God. You have to um, you ha- you cry out to him. You, you ask him. You, it's almost like you're having a best friend. God, you ask God to be your friend, and it actually tells you in the Bible. God, God actually tells you, "I am your friend," mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Jesus is your friend. He will mm-hmm. be your best friend. And and when I'm in the spirit with God, He actually hugs me. He actually says, "Come here, my child. Sit on my lap." Mm-hmm. He actually holds me in the spirit. And when I come out of the spirit, I cry because it's not Him that leaves; it's me. Mm-hmm. I actually separate from him. But when we're, we actually are in the truth and the spirit of God when we're in the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You have to actually wash up in the spirit and the truth of God. So uh, my advice to anybody who wants to have a relationship with God, start with music. Start with mm-hmm. Christian music. Mm-hmm. Christian music is one of the best ways to have a relationship with God because mm-hmm. God loves music. And it, it talks about it in the Bible a lot, especially with David, David mm-hmm. and the harp. Christian music is the best way for anybody to start having a relationship with God. And it is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Just start with Christian music. And God loves it, and it's the best way to get really close with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. But first, the first way to have a relationship with God Almighty is to forgive. Forgive anybody who has hurt you. Mm-hmm. Anybody that you have anything against, forgive them. Mm-hmm. Forgive them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the only way I know when I start, first started having my relationship with God was to forgive Everybody that hurt me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And don't we as human beings have such a hard time doing that sometimes? Yes. <laughs> we, want, we want people to forgive us, but sometimes we have a hard time forgiving another person. And it's like, wow, um, being human sometimes is, is, such a, is such a hard thing to do. But, you know, yes. one, of, one of the words that, that you've mentioned, and it's such an important word, and you say that is first. You know, your book, and I, I understand that your book also talks about the habits of firsts. What does that, what does that mean for someone who doesn't understand about the, the concept of firsts and the value of firsts? Uh, well, first can be a lot of things. First um, is the, the value of first is you can have first with God. You can have... Um, the uh, the first um, um, should be the first in everything you do with God, first mm-hmm. priority in your life, first person you speak to. He he is the first um, thing you do in the in the morning. Speaking mm-hmm. to God, the first thing you do, the first thing you do is open your eyes, talking to God. The first and the last thing you do, um, uh, that your tides, your finances. Because your, your, your finances, your tithes means everything to God. Mm-hmm. There is so much in the Bible on tithes and offerings to God because it means your, your, whatever is in your heart is like you, you, your, your, your treasures is your heart. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. whatever is in your heart, that is what, that, that's what it is. I mean, mm-hmm. if because let me tell you something whatever whatever is in your heart that's what that's what that's what means something to you mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. if you're going to idolize that that's what means something to you if mm-hmm. that's what your god is if that's you true. love jewelry that's what your god is if mm-hmm. you love your car that's what your god is mm-hmm. so god knows what your heart is Okay. So, God knows what you love. If you love money, mm-hmm. if if you love your house, mm-hmm. if you love your children, if you love pictures, if you love um, going to Europe, mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever means the most to you. But let me tell you what means most to me. God Almighty. Mm-hmm. He means more to me than anything in this world. Beyond mm-hmm. anything beyond my children, beyond my husband, beyond anything. He means more to me mm-hmm. because I know one day everything will be gone. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that will be left is God mm-hmm. and the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. 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 And God takes care of everything else. He takes care of yeah. everything else. Below yeah. everything else. He takes care of everything below. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's so wonderful that you remind people of that. I think sometimes we get caught up in our own abilities. We, yes. we, and we, so did I. I yeah. did too at one time. Mm-hmm. But God reminded me because he took everything from me, everything, mm-hmm. even my children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He took so everything if just, from me. If we just give it to God then God will make sure that we have everything, but we first must be willing to give it and up. And that's, that's the value of first. That's it. That's it. That's it. It reminds me of, of the story of a man that comes and says, you know, um, Jesus, I want to be one of your followers. What do I need to do? And, of course, listeners, I am paraphrasing yes. here for sake of time. And he says, well, you know, first you must give up everything, you know, sell all of your that's possessions. Right. And the guy's like, right. What? Absolutely not, you know, exactly. and it's like because that, like you said, that's where his treasure was. That's where his heart that's was, right. and he wasn't that's able right. to part with that. Well, listeners, we need to go to break. I know the conversation okay. was getting really good. <laughs> we need to go to break, but don't worry. We are going to come back okay. and continue this conversation okay. with our author, Tina Taguchi, oh, The Effective okay. Habits of a Newborn Christian. Oh, we'll be back okay. right after Thank this. You. Hi everyone, Dr. Angela here. Did you know that Daily Spark is now on Facebook? 
That's right. You can visit with me at facebook.com forward slash daily spark with Dr. Angela. I want to know more about what you're thinking. I'd love to know which interview that you find the most entertaining or the most informative. I want to talk to you and I want you to be able to talk to me. Simply visit facebook.com forward slash daily spark with Dr. Angela. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Chester. Today, my guest is Tina Taguchi. She is the author of The Effective Habits of a Newborn Christian. Basically, your habits are everything from childhood up to where you are right now. And the question that we're asking is, are you growing in your faith? Are you doing the first things First, are you making sure that the God of our universe is in your life? And that's a habit that you need to create if he isn't. Well, Tina, my next question for you is, you know, we we spend a lot of um, time conversating with other people. But many times people forget that prayer is how you talk to God. Um, is it important to spend a lot of um, conversation with God? Is it, is it important to spend a lot of time in prayer? And if it is, how do we make sure that we, that we do that? How do we increase our time with God? Um, well, uh, well, a lot of people don't make time for God. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people say, well, um, how do you, you do you make how do you make time and mm-hmm. and people have actually asked me how do you how do you make time for God um, I, I actually I, I I feel like that I am blessed to have, mm-hmm. to be able to spend as much time with God but I and my husband says well you sacrifice he's actually found good words to say he says you actually sacrifice for God uh, and that's why you're so blessed um, but um, I, I feel yes I, I, I guess I do sacrifice for God and uh, I spend a lot of time sometimes all day all day I spend with God and mm-hmm. I, I actually love it I, I, I love my time and I actually cry when I part from God because I uh, sometimes I feel like that if I go out in public I'm um, I, I don't want to, because I feel like there's demons. A lot of people don't believe in demons, but I feel mm-hmm. there's demons in in you know, in the spiritual realm. And, and people say, well, I don't believe in that. But, yes, we are in a spiritual world, and mm-hmm. we are in a spiritual battle. But God is my defender. He is, um, it, it says in Ze- Zephaniah 3.17 that God will fight your battles. He is a mighty warrior Mm -hmm. so yes he is my defender he is my he fights my battles so yes I feel like I sacrifice and I do spend a lot of time with God so yes you can increase your effectiveness and uh, uh, your prayer time with God if you sacrifice and you pray in the name of Jesus Mm -hmm. because Jesus's name has great power it unleashes angels to help you and um, there's lots of ways to get the Holy Ghost to anoint you and have uh, a lot of uh, effectiveness in prayer like praying with more than two people because uh, Jesus is there in the midst of you Um, and if you um, like you know take your time at you know like if you're at work and you go take your 15 minute break and go pray Uh you know God loves stuff like that he loves it because you are uh, taking your heart and moving the heart of God because Uh you take your time or you take your lunch hour and you want to move the heart of God Uh because God sees your heart you know there's there's ways of doing things you know that moves the heart of God 
Uh because he knows your heart. He knows your heart. God Mm -hmm. knows your heart. He knows what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there is ways of of moving the heart of God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, I I spend a lot of time in prayer. And there there is um, um, people that pray, you know, in the spirit of God, and there's Mm -hmm. people that just pray to God. So I, I feel that there is people that are, um, that are special assessors, and, you know, uh-huh. incessors, and there's people that are just people who just pray. Uh-huh. So, I mean, the people that are just called, you know, to do uh-huh. God's work, and there's just people that just pray, you know, every day just for pray, uh-huh. pray uh-huh. you know. Uh-huh. So, yes, there's ways to effectively uh, to be able to do that, right. right. To increase the power of prayer, yes. Right. Now, one of the other things that you talk about in your book is um, having the right mindset. Now, I know that listeners, many of you who follow me, especially on Instagram, I use that hashtag all the time, right? Mindset. Uh-huh. It is about your mindset. Yes. Can you yes. talk a little bit more about how do you develop a Christian mindset? Well, a Christian mindset is, um, and it talks about it in Galatians 6, 7, and 9, is um, positive thinking, or mm-hmm. I, I think the world is um, positive and negative. Mm-hmm. So um, the Bible speaks about, um, in, in Galatians 6, 7, and 9, is uh, let us not be weary in well-doing, for mm-hmm. in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So Mm -hmm. if you plant negative thoughts, you will reap corruption. If you plant positive thoughts, you will reap a great reward. So Mm -hmm. I think that if you are always thinking uh, about positive thinking, that, you know, you're always going to be thinking about good things. You're Mm -hmm. always going to wrap your mind around good things that's going to happen. But if you're always thinking bad things, like, oh, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, you're always going to be Uh sick. Uh But if you're Uh always thinking good things that are going to be happening, that's what's going to happen in your life. So, uh, you know, I I, I can think of lots and hundreds of stories uh, when I was growing up, you know. uh, Or, you know, matter of fact, I can tell you a a story uh, if you want to hear it. Uh, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, about um, when I was living in Virginia, it was not a very good story. It was actually about um, I was very depressed. I was suicidal, and I was on a, a great ravine, and I was ready to jump off of it. And the Lord said, no, this is not the path I want for you. Mm-hmm. And, and and he says, uh, and I said, Lord, I just want to die. I, I just want to die if this is not what you have for me. And and this is the the this is the meta negative things that I was thinking. And mm-hmm. and I said, if this is not what you want, give me a Christian husband. Give me something mm-hmm. to show that that you are the powerful God. And within two weeks, he gave me a Christian husband. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He gave mm-hmm. me a Christian husband to show mm-hmm. me the power that he had. Yes. And my, this is what my life changed to because I changed my mind. I changed my, right. my, I mm-hmm. changed my total mindset mm-hmm. of what a person's supposed to live out. Mm-hmm. So this is the total uh, mindset that you're supposed to live out for the Lord. Mhm. Mhm. And then I, I wrote it. this book. I wrote this book within three months. Mhm. Mhm. To show you the power of God, that He showed me that you can write a book. Mm-hmm. I define you. I mm-hmm. show you who you are. And I wrote this book, this Effective Habits, within three months. Mhm. Mhm. That is awesome. That's, that's the power of God. Mhm. Mhm. Now, when we when we talk about the the things that we should and shouldn't do in in our lives as Christians, um, everyone must deal with uh, protection, 
at some particular point as a Christian. What do you what do you feel um, or, or what do you deal with when it comes to the idea of protection and our Christian walk? Well, there is lots of stuff in the Bible, uh, uh, literally, about protection. Mm-hmm. Because we are in a spiritual war, and, and God gives us lots and lots of spiritual protection. Um, there, it, for matter of fact, there is Ephesians 6 through 10, uh, 6, 10 through 13, which you have to start with the 10 because you have to know it, the mighty power of God. Mm-hmm. And it's putting on the whole armor of God. And I say it every day. And um, Psalms 91 teaches us how to hide in the secret high place of the most high God. James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil, he, flee, he will flee from you. The word of God is a sword. I mean, it cuts Satan to the bone in the mirror. Mm-hmm. So, the the whole Bible is God's uh, little literally He literally protects us from uh, spiritual darkness and wickedness. Mm-hmm. So He literally gives us um, um, a whole book full of protection. Mm-hmm. You know, David was running for like four 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 years at Hayden, and mm-hmm. he he writes this whole book on how to protect himself so he god literally tells us how to protect ourselves from wickedness Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. i mean and it works because i use it all the time i'm literally Mm -hmm. in prayer all the time so and i've literally been through lots and lots of stuff in my life and it's brought me back from the pits so I, I, I've got lots of examples that shows <laughs> that I've been through mm-hmm. so many storms. And mm-hmm. I literally pray for my children for, for secure salvation every day. Mm-hmm. And I know my God is going to bring them out. I know he is. And you have to boldly say, I know my God is going to do it. I know my okay. God is going to do it. Mm-hmm. And he just he sends all these people my way to pray. And me and my husband are literally witnesses. And we go to these 20, 30 groups all the time. We pray for these people. And we see all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're eyewitnesses to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just amazing to see all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It really, it really and truly is, and it is amazing what uh, God can and will do in our lives if only we allow him to do what he said that he would do. Well, Tina, I just want to say thank you so much for being on the show today. You have yeah. really inspired someone. You have really reminded uh, not only a, a newborn Christian, but you've reminded some of our more mature Christians as well about mindset, about first, about having these effective habits as Christians and how important they are. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm just so glad to be part of God's kingdom. I just want to, you know, just show somebody the love of God. I'm just so grateful for everything I've been through. I'm just so, so grateful that God can use me you know, to, you know, secure somebody's salvation. I just want to use it to show somebody that they can use whatever they've been through, you know, just not let any of it go to waste. Mm -hmm. Don't let any Mm -hmm. of it go to waste. Use it for your salvation. Use Mm -hmm. it for your salvation. Mm -hmm. Lift it up. Praise God. Because that's what Jesus, you know, that's why he went to the cross, to glorify the Father. Just use use it for your salvation. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, praise Him. Thank you. And Tina, thank, thank you so you. much again for being on the show. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, listeners, we want to thank you as well for tuning in to Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. It is always wonderful to spend the morning with you. Now, remember, if you are not following us on Facebook, please be sure to go on over to Facebook.com slash Daily Spark with Dr. Angela and talk about the show. We want to hear what you think about our guests. We want to hear about what you want us to talk about. It's all about having a great relationship. May God continue to shine his grace and his mercy upon you. May you know that you are never alone, that he is always with you. Be blessed in the Lord. Bye-bye.